I am pretty sure you know about Google Docs for word processing and Google Sheets for spreadsheets. But have you ever tried Google Slides for presentations? No? Well, now is the time. We're going to be exploring Google Slides today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. And I am looking forward to what we're going to do more of today because it's presentations. Now, as I was preparing for this demo, I kind of went in my own mental wayback machine, remembering the first presentation packages that I used. And I think the first that I used a lot was Aldous Persuasion. Aldous, of course, was the creator of also PageMaker, the page layout program. They were later acquired by Adobe and the Persuasion tool was dropped. Uh, but PowerPoint was always there in the early days and then later on in the Apple World Keynote. And Google Drive does a surprisingly good job of emulating what a lot of those other presentation packages do. Now with one caveat, Google Drive really isn't built for in-person presentations. Its strength is doing online presentations. So it dovetails beautifully for creating videos like we're doing now or doing webinars or online trainings. It really works well in that space. And of course, being part of the Google Drive family, it is a completely free tool but it does a pretty fine job. I think you will be pleasantly surprised. So let's start, let's dive in, and let's create a new Google Slide. Uh, now, when you open Google Slides, it brings you into the most vanilla of slideshow interfaces, like big yawn here as far as what we've got. Uh, just basically a black and white slide. Now, if you want to, you can import your own backgrounds and all of your own digital assets if you have them designed, but so many of us will just choose to use one of the templates and they're always adding to the number of templates that are available, uh, but we can just, let's just choose this one here. We're gonna bring this in as a template and then we allow Google then to provide for us the kind of the color theme and the font choices and the slide layout that we can then work against. I find it easiest when I'm creating simple tutorials to do it this way rather than to create my own from scratch, but it's your choice. Now we can go in here and we can edit any of these pieces and we all add a subtitle. And so you can build out, begin to build out your slideshow. Once you've got your title slide in place, you incorporate and add more slides by creating a new slide and it's gonna create a, a basic topic slide. If you go under the slide menu, is it? Yeah, you can apply a layout to any slide and you can see that they've pre-formatted several slides. This is called a title and body slide, which is kind of your basic, the basic information. You might choose to do two column slides, so you can choose this here and now you have your second slide. And you can put all of your content, oopsie, you can put all of your content into each of these, into each of these text fields that you have. Content goes here. And you can slowly build out your slideshow. Now, you might not want to have a second column here of text, but instead you might want to incorporate some digital assets like some graphics or photos or charts or something like that. So you can actually, let me just delete that. And let us put in a show you some of the image choices we have. So if we go under the insert menu, now you've got the option to do this in two places. Under the insert menu, we see the full range of things that we can incorporate into this slideshow. We can incorporate a text box, an image, which I will do in a moment, uh, different shapes, tables, charts, diagrams, word art. So you've got lots of flexibility as far as different digital assets that you might want to bring in. So let's just bring in a quick image. So I'm just gonna grab something from my Google Photo Library. When I open that, because it's integrated, Here's my Google Photos available to me. So let's just find a picture. Let's find that picture of Farley. Let's put it in. So I just drag it out. And so there I can quickly add any images or any digital assets that I have from anywhere on my computer or I can create them from scratch should I choose. Now I can also, let's uh, dress this up a bit by adding a shape and you can see we can add boxes and arrows and call outs and I like these call outs. You know what I like is I like these because I want to do kind of a quote bob bubble here. So, and I, I select it. Now watch, I just click and drag and you see how it's creating that little quote bubble, quote, quote bubble, quote bubble. There it is. Now I don't like that background color. So let's change that right now to something a little milder. There we go. If I double click in it, I can add text. So you can very quickly dress out your slideshow 
any way you choose. Now, these assets that you have, these illustration assets, I think are really valuable. Let me add another slide. And I'm going to make this one a uh, blank slide because I'm going to show you some of the illustration tools. So we can, by choosing the different shapes, we can put in a variety of different shapes like this where if you had to, say, build out a, and I'll duplicate that, if you had to build out a process uh, that you were going from, you can then use these different arrow tools and line tools to draw arrows from one to the other, or you can do it this way here. That I actually don't like that arrow. Let's do a shape arrow instead. Let's do arrows this way here. And let's choose that arrow. And let's make it a big arrow. There you go. Now you're getting the idea. Let's change the color on the inside of that arrow to red there. And then we could also use these tools to create connectors. So if I choose here and I choose elbow connector, and I go from this one to this one. Do you see how we're creating a flow and then go from this one here to this one? Oops, that's, uh, I need to choose another elbow connector. There we go. And I'll go from this one to here to this one to up here. There we go. So you can see what we're doing is we're creating uh, a graphic that could describe a process, a, a production process, any of that sort of stuff. You can create that here within Google Slides. So you see what I'm doing is I'm creating a kind of a workflow that, that could be a, the, a production process or anything along that line. I really like how simple and how easy it is to create this sort of graphic, this sort of explanation in Google Slides. I think it's one of the kind of the hidden strengths of this particular pro product. These aren't super fancy graphics, but they illustrate what we're covering very, very effectively. The last thing that I want to talk to you about today is actually creating a presentation using Google Slides. Now, it's not designed for live presentation. I wouldn't use this if I was giving a talk in a normal live setting. Instead, I would choose PowerPoint or uh, Apple's Keynote uh, as a presentation tool. However, for the online space, Google Slides provide some really compelling usefulness. Now, the first thing is, if you're just delivering a webinar or you're delivering some sort of a live streaming feed where you can share your desktop, you can take your presentation at any point and just click on the present button here at the top and you are able to then walk through your presentation as you're delivering your content. In this form here, it is the simplest and easiest way to integrate a presentation into a, a live webinar or a live streaming feed. However, there are a few other ways that, this, that Google Slides can be used for presentation. The first is you can actually publish your slideshow as a standalone document that people can view themselves. Now, let me show you how that works. Uh, if you go into the file menu, we have here publish to the web. If we open publish to the web, we can then choose how to present our slideshow in a kind of a slide sharing metaphor. It's gonna create a URL that you can share and I'll show you what this looks like. I'll just copy this and I'll go to a new tab and I'll show you exactly what a person who's gonna view this presentation is gonna look like. It, it looks just like this. They can actually page through it themselves or it will timed go through your slides so you can tell your story here. Now, there are some limitations here. Uh, for example, it doesn't easily support a voiceover track, although there is a kind of a MacGyver hack you can do. You can actually, if you want to have a voiceover where you're actually talking your way through this sort of a shared presentation, you can actually insert movie tracks by inserting a video. Where is the insert? There, insert video. So record audio tracks, save them, and then play, you place them in the slideshow as an autoplay video track with no video, obviously, just the audio. And then you'll have a narrative for each slide as you go through. That's kind of one workaround, not the most elegant, but it does allow you to have a voiceover track should you choose. But for the most part, these slideshows are best served with, with when just the on-screen descriptive nature of the slideshow tells the story that you're trying to cover. And you have the ability to do that just by publishing this to the web. You also have the ability, should you choose, to create a Q&A track for any video that you're, or any slideshow that you're creating. If you go into the audience tools here, you can create a URL, which again, let me share this with you and show you exactly what it looks like. It looks like this, 
which will allow you to embed a URL somewhere within how you share your content to allow people to ask all sorts of questions, which you can be doing in real time or asynchronously. And if we go back into our presentation here, right there, we should see in the Q&A that the person is able to ask questions. So again, you can use this in conjunction with a live feed. You can use this asynchronously, allowing people to ask questions, which you can then audit and you can deal with as you go along. It's not the most elegant. It's not replacing a webinar solution, but it gives you some really creative options for sharing your slides. I think for most of us, when we create a slideshow in Google Slides, we're gonna incorporate it into our live stream, whatever it is, be it a YouTube live, a, a Facebook live, you can incorporate it in, you can incorporate it in with any webinar tool, anywhere where you can share your screen, that's where Google Slides really shines, as far as I'm concerned. Summing things up, there's a lot more to Google Slides than meets the eyes. It is limited as far as some of its functionality goes, but as a free tool, it is a great uh, brainstorming tool for creating ideas and concepts. You can use it to build out ideas, to create outlines and workflows. Uh, obviously, as a online presentation tool, it's got some real serious chops, and even as a tool for you to record content that you can then deliver and publish to people on the web, it's got some capabilities in that space too. I hope you found today's video to be useful. A couple of favors to ask before you go. If you found this video to be useful, I appreciate you sharing with others and letting them know about the Dotto Tech channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you're alerted when we upload any new videos. I look forward to your comments in the comments below on YouTube. If you have any questions or concerns, I read each and every comment, even if I don't have time to reply to everyone. Until next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.